everybody it's Angela here so lovely to have you guys join me as always just want to say a very warm welcome if you are new to my channel and very kind of you to pop on over and of course to everybody who's here all the time hello everyone welcome back right as you know I have been working on the recipe journal which you've had um the first episode on how I made the cover so we did that I'm going to be doing a few of the little projects that are involved in there so I'm not going to be doing every single page but um, some of the the elements that might be um, a little bit different or well new on my channel so that's what I'm going to share with you today so I've opened up this um, recipe um, journal if you haven't seen this recipe journal and you want to see a flip through I have the link for the complete playlist in the description box below. That's the little V on your phone that says click there or see more on a computer. It drops down and a wealth of information come, um, falls below it. Things like the kits that I've used, um, the playlist for the rest of this project, um, all sorts of bits of information that you want to that you usually ask me for. I've also got my Amazon uh, favorite tools kit uh, list there um, and so many other things. All right, so please go and have a look at the video just below it. And of course, that you can find on a computer, your iPad or a telephone. There won't be something like that on the telly, obviously. Um, so you'd have to use um, a device to find that. Right, so what I've been doing here in the recipe journal is this is complete um, and I'm showing you certain elements that I have got in here that you can add to this journal that you, um, if you're following along, or you could add to any journal. Um, it doesn't have to be specifically a recipe one. So what I'm going to do is this middle, um, sort of this spread that I have here. Um, it's really quick and easy. You could use this as a beautiful middle spread for your page. But for me, it has half the page there. And and she's got to find the other bit <laughs> that is here. And that's the other side of it. It's a great um, sort of double pocket where you've got a, a pocket area in the front over here. Um, you've also got the pockets at the back over here. All right. Um, so that's what we're going to do and it's not going to take very long at all and it makes a lovely addition to any journal okay so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to just put this aside quickly and we are going to start right so what will you need I am going to be doing it uh, following along exactly using exactly the same paper um, in the journal that I have just shown you the recipe one so on the one side of the page so this is like your a4 or your letter which you would whichever you would normally use i've printed one of these pages this is part of the my porch prints grandma's kitchen kit the digital kit so this is one of the pages and i love this it's really um, vintagey and eclectic let's say because we've got modern and old all in one here all right, so I've printed that on the one side. Now, what I've printed on the other side is something that I find really handy. Um, I have printed my tea-stained paper on the other side. Um, now, if you have an inject machine, it's not always, uh, depending on how you tea-stain your papers, but usually if you tea-stain the paper on the other side, um, you don't get uh, exactly a smooth finish like this if you were wondering so if you're happy to use one of your tea stained papers and put it through and you like that texture that's absolutely fine what I've done here is I've printed this on the one side and then this as I said is a tea stained digital which is available in my shop and the links for this are in the description box before all right so that's how I have got this effect so it's just a case of printing on the one side for me, flipping the um, paper over and printing on the other side. And that's different for everybody. Depends on your printer. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold this in half. Um, so that's easy enough. I do need to, because mine has a one-way pattern here, I am going to have to be mindful that that is the upright position. So if you do have a one-way design, then just be mindful of that. So that's easily done. Then I've taken 
tea stain paper, um, one of mine. So this is a normal tea stain paper. You could go and print double sided on this if you don't. So that would work just as well. All right, so we've got um, two the same size here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just um, fold this up and I'll give you a measurement here. I just want to eyeball this quickly. Just getting that level. Hopefully that is straight. I'm sure it should be. We'll see now. So I've just moved, got that little bit like this. Um, and then I'm gonna fold it in half. Let me just tell you the measurement here before I get uh, waylaid. Sorry, I just want the um, dual sided. Right, so we're looking at one and three quarter inches or just over four centimeters in width there. Okay, so that's what I've done. You can do uh, whatever you would prefer. And then I'm just gonna fold this whole piece of paper in half again. So there we go. All right, so that's perfect. That looks good. All right, so I'm just going to make sure that I've got the that bit really nice and smooth like that. So now we have a piece that's slightly shorter um, and we've got that fold up like that. All right, so I'm happy with that. Now what I'm going to do is I want to turn this piece of paper over and I want to be quite mindful, let's make a little pencil mark here, of the edge of that fold here. And I'm going to just make a little mark on the underside, on both sides, just to see where that flap ends. All right, you won't see the underside, so it doesn't matter if you use a pen. Now what I want to do is I want to take this flap back. I want to hold this just slightly away from the middle, and I want to kind of match up with this bit over here. Um, and I'll show you. It's not going to be quite straight. All right, so you see I've got just a little bit away from the, the middle bit there. And uh, that's about, what is that? That's about half a centimeter or a quarter of an inch, more or less. Okay, you can see it's not quite straight. But what I've done is I have bent that just to um, match up with the point over there. Okay, and I'm going to do the same here. So I'm going to just fold that in half. I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to just match that corner there again. So we do that. If I press it down, I want to just match up that side. Okay. Like that. And then I'm going to just use my bone folder again just to fold those down. All right. Now you've got this bit that's almost well it's the 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 bones of it is, is there now. Right, what I'm going to do now is, and you can use whichever glue you prefer, I am going to just take my glue stick. You can cut these pieces off. I don't do that because I like the strength at the edge here. I don't want it to be fragile. So I'm going to just put some glue on the under flap here. And I'm going to do the same on this bit over here. Okay, so just like that. And that just gives that um, this page some strength. Now I have used a um, hundred and I think this is a hundred and twenty GSM paper. I think that's about forty pound weight. All right, one and a half the times the thickness of copy paper. You know I'm not a fan of copy paper because I don't like the fragility of it. All right, so we've got that in place now. Um, what we want to do is we are going to stitch this in a moment, um, but you're welcome to glue it. So what? let's just do that quickly. I'm going to put some glue just down the center bit here, like that, just so that this stays in place. And while I'm at it, I will just put a very thin amount of glue on the ends here because I will be going around there with my sewing machine. You do not need to go around there with your sewing machine. Just make sure that you 
um, put a decent amount of glue on the ends or even double sided tape if you feel more confident with that. Okay, so this bit's looking good. So let's just put that to the side for a moment. I'll just do that there. Right, now what I want to do is I want to um oh, I want to just put some little decorative bits over here. So let's move that up there. What I did was um I have cut a strip of paper uh, that is very similar to uh, the piece we're using at the back here. So I've got a separate piece and I've gone and cut, um, I think it was a bit across there. All right, doesn't matter where. Um, I've done different bits for different pages. Okay, so we've got that bit done. Um, and then what I've done is I have just measured because I don't want it going straight across here and bulking up the the center piece there. So I've got a piece that's going to fit like that um, and it's just short of, of the center and a piece that's going to fit like that. So if you look at the two pieces together, um, you'll see there's a gap. So when you, you're not bulking up this fold line. All right. So that's what I've got there, like that. This one I might probably turn around because I prefer it that way. But I've got different pieces and I've prepared another one for the next step. Right, so that's what goes on there. And then what I did was I've got um, these lovely words from Mrs. Cog. And these are the kitchen words and quotes. I have cut out two over here and made them slightly narrower because they were, um, I've got simmer down and stir the pot, but I have also done some others. All right, so I've just cut those out. This is a three page set, so I'll use quite a few of these in my journal, the kitchen journal. Right, so what I'm gonna do here is, I'm just going to um, place these onto this bit here. So I'll do that quickly. I've got stir the pot and simmer down and I, I will be stitching around mine so you don't have to do that if you don't want to all right so that's this one there we go if you just want to glue that would be absolutely fine right so they would glue quite well there now before i go and stick these down what i did was i just did a little bit of stitching around there like that and a little bit of stitching around there like that so i'll save these for later and just bring in the two that i have done already okay so these are slightly different they've got different sentiments on them but the same principle so that's going to fit over there and that's going to fit over there and again you can see we've got that middle bit that's um, not bulked up so I'm going to stick these down on here now um, so don't look at the underside because I had a misprint I used it for the labels so <laughs> as you do because you've got to not waste paper oh don't stick it upside down Angela <laughs> Okay, um, so we're going to just stick that there, like that. This is such a pretty kit, and I tell you, it works so well with the Mrs. Cog's labels. So I'm, I'm loving it. Right, so we've got that bit down, um, and I will end up sewing this in a minute, but uh, I'm not going to do that right yet let's carry on with the next bit so just put that aside right what i'm going to do now is i'm going to take the page this is the underside all right so just get it the right way up um, and i'm going to do some stenciling on there so i have got um, a lovely stencil that i like to use this is the one i used in that book um, and then what i do is i just take my um antique linen distress ink all right so i've got this one antique linen and this is quite a nice light shade so i just use my brush and i'm going to just do this on the corner here so i'm holding it down i mean you guys know unless you knew of course um how to do this all right so giving it a bit of a 
a light stenciling here and you can't go wrong with these brushes if you've ever tried them before you know what I mean these are just awesome brushes right so it just gives a, a, a lovely light finish there and I'm going to do the same on the side quickly I mean you can use your your vintage photo it'll give a darker appearance so it's up to you what you would like to do or a totally different color altogether you know that would be great as well okay so we've got our stenciling done there so let's just hang that up and there we go right now what's got to happen is this has got to go onto the top here like that and we want to make sure that we get these central points correctly uh, positioned all right so this is the bit where we're going to glue this all down um, after I've stitched this. So what I'm going to do now, um, just so, and I'll be back with you, is I'm going to just stitch along that line, across down there, straight across and around. So just the perimeter here. All right, and I will join you back here in a minute. Okay, so we're back, and you can see I have just stitched around the edges there, like that. Uh, and straight down across the bottom like that and I just like it stitched of course as I said anything is possible uh, you can stencil on here as well if you want to um, and this bit is going to now fit onto this bit over here all right so it looks a bit bland at the moment but it's all going to be fine now just bear in mind that this is a pocket this is a pocket we want to stick the middle bit here and we want to stick this little bit here but not these bits there all right so i'm going to start with the middle um just so that i can um secure that properly now you can put double-sided tape but i think it um bulks up that fold line for the uh, center piece the center fold line for where you're going to join your spine and then it makes it awkward for the book to close so um, I'm going to just match it up at the bottom just give this a guess of where you would like to place it and I'm just fitting this fold line here onto this fold line here all right so that's all I'm doing like that Right, so that we now know is where that needs to go. Now we're able to lift that up and we are going to just put the glue on that side there. And then as I said, just along the bottom. Like that. Okay, so that bit can go straight down. All right. I'm happy with that we're going to just turn that around I have got that the right way up yeah I was having a bit of a moment there so we're going to do the same here lots of glue don't be shy with the glue I mean this art glitter glue is fantastic um, so you know you can't go wrong with that okay so we've got that all sorted and stuck down there okay so we pretty much finished with the framework of this now while I'm just waiting for that to dry a little bit all right you could do so many things with this you could put patterns over here you could put lace you could do whatever you want um, now what I did was I've just got a couple of things and this sort of livens it up a bit so for example this is a tag from the kit and that's going to go into the back pocket and you can just see how that red lifts everything up then these are all bits from that same kit um, I've just taken various bits and pieces from there and um, stuck them into the pocket at the bottom and I'm just seeing and I like them the different colors sort of just make it stand out so here again I've made a, a card I've taken a page folded it in half I've got beautiful French pastry recipe on the back there so I'm going to stick that into the back one and I've got a bit of red here's just another one from um, the kit as well and then got this little envelope that came from the kit that's just so cute and I am going to put that in the bottom there like that so we'll just move that over Right, so there's the little, um, you could use this, as I said, as a middle spread, or you can use this in your journal. So when this goes into the signature, 
and I'll show you the other one from the book and I've taken the pieces out you can see it fits beautifully and it, it doesn't have an issue with folding everything there is perfect okay you can alternate the tea stain paper I used a much darker one here gave a gorgeous contrast so that's also great as well all right so that's what I did there and again these bits just go in here so that's that side and then we had the same on the other side over here like this all right so that just goes into the side again as well and i just love the way that looks okay so i hope you've enjoyed that um i'm going to show you one other little project quickly um, so just I'm going to get my things together. Another very quick project is this little envelope here. So we'll do that in a second as well. All right. So go and grab hold of one of your mailers and I'll see you back here in a sec. Welcome back, everybody. So I have just decided to put do this little project over here for you. Um, this is, again, a, a lovely little quick project. So it's not going to take us long. Just got two little bits of ephemera tucked into this little pocket here and what I've done is I've taken a mailer so really easy again take one of the mailers with the windows in made a quick little pocket and um, just a little card that slides in over here all right so I'm going to show you how I did that it's ever so quick so I thought I'd just add it on to the end of this little um, video for today all right so I'm going to put that to the side there um, and what you'll need is a mailer any mailer that you have you can trim it down to the size that you want we're looking at nine and a half by uh, four and a half but i am going to trim it slightly on the one side this is a used uh, mailer it's not something that um is new i as you can see i have slit it on the side there so i want to just trim that side with the, that i've slit so i'm going to just do this with my craft knife you can do this with your own scissors or your trimmer so I'm going to just trim off and make it nice and a nice clean finish here all right so there we go that's pretty much how let me just line this up have I done it right I hope so <laughs> I don't want to go and have to find a new mailer well I think that's about right Oh, I went a bit skew there, so we'll just do that again. Um, there we go. So that's nice and clean, that nice clean finish that I like. All right, so this is just a mailer, as I said. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just put something underneath there. Something, I've just got a piece of paper here again from the kit. I just want to put um, a little bit of a scrap of paper just underneath that mailer window so that I don't see those colors although this particular mail is not particularly ugly um, it doesn't go with my color scheme so there we go I'm going to stick that in there quickly and I'm just going to take my no I don't think that's the right glue for that I'll just take my little art glitter glue or you can guys use whatever you like to use and um going to just stick that on the inside there I'm going quite close to the edges here because I don't want my tag to catch on it so I'm going to just stick it there but underneath all right so we want to just get that in place and that looks about right and I'm just going right over to the edges all right so you can see now that's got a much nicer finish in keeping with the theme Right, so now I just want to have a look at the back here. This bit looks a bit um, flappy, so I'm just going to stick this down so we don't have a problem with that. So I'm just tidying up my mailer a little bit here, and you can easily do that. Even if they don't, uh, your family members don't open the mail properly, you're still able to trim down and use it, especially if you're covering it. So don't... Um, throw them away you know you can always patch up and make it work right what I'm going to do now is I want to um, fold this over so I'm going to do it quickly where I want it um, and I'll tell you the measurement that I'm doing so I'm just going to do that and then I'm going to just 
make it lie nice and flat. That's going to be our little pocket piece. And that looks like two and a quarter inches or hmm, five and a half centimeters. All right, so that's what we've got there. Um, little tip, just put some glue. Let's just make sure. Yes, just put some glue on the, just on the lower side here. And that's just going, I'm going to just stick that. It prevents this bulging when you fold up the pocket like that so now it's not going to bulge in this section here otherwise it tends to want to do that so that's just a little tip all right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of this paper which you saw me use earlier um, it's just a scrap I've cut out and I'm going to put that on that bit over there um, and I think what I'll do is I will just give this a little bit of a distressing on the edges before I stick this other one down. All right. That's just a matter of personal choice. So we've got that, and now I am going to just stick that down like that. Okay. And again, um, the glue you choose to use is up to yourself. I will probably do a little bit of stitching, um, but it's optional. All right, so we'll do this as if we're gluing. All right, so I've got plenty of glue there. I'm going to stick this down now, just finding the edge like that. All right, so I'm liking that there. And now I just need to put a little piece over there. So I'm going to move that down for the moment. Um, I've taken a sheet of paper that looks from the kit. Um, it's got quite a few recipes on the page and I have just cut um, a piece that I'm going to fit in um, on the edge there. This one's slightly too long and that's okay because we can just trim it off so I can see that's where I need how much I need to do so I just want to do that quickly. It's because I um, trimmed the edge off and I knew I was but I obviously didn't engage it and uh, sufficiently right so that's just slightly too wide now I just wanted to show you um, what how I do the window for this very easily and you don't need to use a die cut machine and you've seen me do this before but just in case that you haven't it's going to be really quick um, I hold this in place you can use those little clips to keep it in place and then I just lift this up with my pencil above um, the window line here all right, and now I can see where it is exactly that the window is. Okay, and this one I want it slightly higher, so I'm going to make it higher. This one I want slightly lower than the window, and I'm going to do it just there. All right, then what I do is I just draw, um, measure up these lines like that. And I'm not going to cut it out because I have cut one out. You'll be glad to know. <laughs> right. And then I just take my craft knife and cut along the lines that I have drawn here. So I'm just matching these all up. Okay. So just take your craft knife then. Um, and then just cut with your ruler and your craft knife the area there that you want to remove. All right, so that's what I did. And I'll just put that to the side. Um, and that is exactly what I did with this one. Um, and that's just the middle bit that I've removed. All right, so keep that. We'll find a use for it. So now when I put this bit over here like this, uh, you can see that it's perfect for that window over there. All right. So I'm quite happy with that. So I will go and stick this down. But again, I just want to very quickly just do this bit over here just so that I don't have any stark white showing through now it doesn't go all the way down so that's fine it's just the two sides really okay so I'm now going to just stick this bit down like that all right so I've got that all ready and glued now I'm just going to make sure that I have it where I want it before I 
go and stick that all the way down okay so there we go i'm happy with that okay lovely all right and um, now we can go and stick this bit down now that we've done that bit so you can use um glue or double-sided tape whatever you choose so just on that side there and this side here so opposite lengths like that and now we'll just push that over and we can hold that in place and look how quick that was to do and you wouldn't even say it was a mailer would you so there we go i've got that done now i've got a little uh, sentiment from that mrs cogs list there again and i'm going to stick that down just over here or maybe up there so i'll do that so again we'll just put some glue on Right, so that can go over there like that okay and that's all that I needed to do on that front okay then what I did was I made a little card um, from recycled packaging um, so and I've printed out um, this page here this one here just as a backing which is part of that kit and I've taken one of the bits of ephemera from the kit and put a tab on tag on all of these bits are from the kit so that's just going to slide into this um, pocket over here like that all right and there you have it as quick as that and it's just a case of taking the ephemera and then deciding what you want and putting however many or however little in there like that all right so we've made this today we've made this one as well so we've made these two today with all the ephemera pieces which are um you saw me put in earlier so it's just another two little pieces for our journal so i hope you guys have had fun um and give this a go um and remember um you've got the pouch and the other ones to make as well um, I just wanted to show you one last thing. You can let me know. I have got the most gorgeous, really old, um, good, fair, wartime recipe cookbook. Um, this is from the late 1930s. So it's really old. Um, and it's got the most wonderful recipes and pictures and things. Really old um, of recipes that they used to make in the wartime, and my grandmother used to talk about this. Now I'm not, I can't bring myself to pull it apart to use. So what I'm going to be doing is making some scan copies of these pages because the recipes and the little bits of information and things in here are just lovely. So let me know if you would be guys would be interested in scanned copies of these pages. Um, that I can make as a digital um, for you to use in your recipe books as well. I will be using some of these in mine. So it's up to you. Um, you can let me know if that's an option. If not, that's all right. Um, I'm going to be using it for my own. All right, so let me know what you think. Okay, guys, thank you so much again for following along with me today. I hope you've had fun. Two quick little projects you can use in any journal at all. But of course, I've made these specifically themed for the recipe journal that we're working on. Um, looking forward to seeing what, you're, what you think and your comments. And as always, thank you so much for being as amazing as you all are. Um, and I'll see you all in the very next video. So bye bye.